Welcome back, eighth grade. We are starting lesson 13 homework on page 66. So join me, page 66. We're gonna go a little bit down where you'll see the words, it was about this time. All right, and on your homework page, it says that you should be looking for evidence of how Squealer and Napoleon use propaganda, like we did in class all day. Um, looking for those strategies that they use to convince the animals to get them on their side. So here we go, page 66. All right. It was about this time that the pigs suddenly moved into the farmhouse and took up their residence there. Again, the animals seemed to remember that a resolution against this had been passed in the early days and again, Squealer was able to convince them that this was not the case. It was absolutely necessary, he said, that the pigs, who were the brains of the farm, should have a quiet place to work in. It was also more suited to the dignity of the leader. For of late, he had taken to speaking of Napoleon under the title of leader. To live in a house, than in a mere sty. Nevertheless, some of the animals who, some of the animals were disturbed when they heard that the pigs not only took their meals in the kitchen and used the drawing room as a recreation room, but also slept in the beds. Boxer passed it off as usual with, Napoleon is always right. But Clover, who thought she remembered a definite ruling against beds, went to the end of the barn and tried to puzzle out the seven commandments, which were inscribed there. Finding herself unable to read more than individual letters, she fetched Muriel. Muriel, she said, read me the fourth commandment. Does it not say something about never sleeping in a bed? With some difficulty, Muriel spelt it out. It says, no animal shall sleep in a bed with sheets, she announced finally. Curiously enough, Clover had not remembered that the fourth commandment mentioned sheets. But as it was there on the wall, it must have done so. And Squealer, who happened to be passing at this moment, attended by two or three dogs, was able to put the whole matter in its proper perspective. You have learned then, comrades, he said, that we pigs now sleep in the beds of the farmhouse. And why not? You did not suppose, surely, that there was ever a ruling against beds? A bed is merely a place to sleep in. A pile of straw in a stall is a bed properly regarded. The rule was against sheets, which are a human invention. We have removed the sheets from the farmhouse beds and sleep between blankets. And very comfortable beds they are, too but not more comfortable than we need, I can tell you, comrades. With all the brain work we have to do nowadays, you would not rob us of a repose, would you, comrades? You would not have us too tired to carry out our duties. Surely none of you wishes to see Jones come back. Turn the page. The animals reassured him on this point immediately. And no more was said about the pigs sleeping in the farmhouse beds. And when, some days afterwards, it was announced that from now on, the pigs would get up an hour later in the mornings than the other animals, no complaint was made about that either. By the autumn, the animals were tired, but happy. They had had a hard year. And after the sale of part of the hay and corn, the stores of food for the winter were none too plentiful. But the windmill compensated for everything. It was almost half built now. After the harvest, after the harvest, there was a stretch of clear, dry weather, and the animals toiled harder than ever. 
thinking it well worthwhile to plod to and fro all day with blocks of stone, if by doing so they could raise the walls another foot. Boxer would even come out at nights and work for an hour or two on his own by the light of the harvest moon. In their spare moments, the animals would walk round and round the half-finished mill, admiring the strength and perpendicularity of its walls, and marveling that they should have ever been able to build anything so imposing. Only old Benjamin refused to grow enthusiastic about the windmill, though as usual, he would utter nothing beyond a cryptic remark that hmm, donkeys live a long time. November came with raging southwest winds. Building had to stop because it was now too wet to mix the cement. Finally, there came a night when the gale was so violent that the storm, storm buildings, sorry, the farm buildings rocked on their foundations and several tiles were blown off the roof of the barn. The hens woke up squawking with terror because they had all dreamed simultaneously of hearing a gun go off in the distance. In the morning, the animals came out of their stalls to find that the flagstaff had been blown down and an elm tree at the foot of the orchard had been plucked up like a radish. They had just noticed this when a cry of despair broke from every animal's throat. A terrible sight had met their eyes. The windmill was in ruins. With one accord, they dashed down to the spot. Napoleon, who seldom moved out of a walk, raced ahead of them all. Yes, there it lay, the fruit of all their struggles leveled to its foundations. The stones they had broken and carried so laboriously scattered all around. Unable at first to speak, they stood gazing mournfully at the litter of fallen stone. Napoleon paced to and fro in silence, occasionally snuffling at the ground. His tail had grown rigid and twitched sharply from side to side, a sign of him intense mental activity, and suddenly he halted as though his mind were made up. Comrades, he said quietly, do you know who is responsible for this? Do you know the enemy who has come in the night and overthrown our windmill? Snowball! He suddenly roared in a voice of thunder. Snowball has done this thing in sheer malignity, thinking to set back our plans and avenge himself for his ignominious expulsion. This traitor has crept here under cover of night and destroyed our work of nearly a year. Comrades, here and now I pronounce the death sentence upon Snowball, animal hero second class, and a half a bushel of apples to any animal who brings him to justice, a full bushel to anyone who captures him alive. The animals were shocked beyond measure to learn that even Snowball could be guilty of such an action. There was a cry of indignation and everyone began thinking out of ways catching Snowball if he should ever come back. Almost immediately, the footprints of a pig were discovered in the grass at a little distance from the knoll. They could only be traced for a few yards, but appeared to lead to a hole in the hedge. Snowball snuffed deeply at them and pronounced, mm -hmm, them to be snowballs. He gave it as his opinion that Snowball probably come from the direction of the Foxwood Farm. No more delays, comrades, cried Napoleon when the footprints had been examined. There is work to be done. This very morning we begin rebuilding the windmill, and we will build all through the winter, rain or shine. We will teach this miserable traitor that he cannot undo our work so easily. Remember, comrades, there must be no alteration in our plans. They shall be carried out to the day. Forward, comrades! Long live the windmill! Long live Animal Farm! 
All right. With that information, answer the questions on your homework page, and we'll talk more about this tomorrow.